guys. Um, I've been going to the gym lately. I like, why is that fun? I like the gym. I like the gym, it's fun. I don't like the people in the gym though, they can be weird. This happened to me recently, this guy comes into the locker room, goes, hey man, I don't mean to be gay, but your arms are pretty ripped. Appreciated the compliment, didn't need the homophobic precursor, you know? Like I didn't need it, the compliment was sufficient. Plus, what was this guy so afraid of that I was gonna do if I didn't know he wasn't gay before he told me that? I could be like, oh, you like my arms, thank you, because I do the bicep curls and tricep extent, can I blow you? Yeah, please? Yeah, you want to cuddle? Like, us? Oh, you want to get inside me, bro? Like, I wasn't going to say that to him. You know? He was probably the same type of dude that says no homo. And if you know people that say no homo, stop knowing them. Because they're worthless. I mean, how insecure about your own sexuality do you need to be Well, you can't give another guy a compliment without letting the rest of the room know that you crush pussy? <laughs> or so you think. There's some serious, like, psychological repression going on over there. So when that guy came up to me and was like, hey man, I don't mean to be gay, but nice arms. I should have been like, hey man, I don't mean to be psychoanalytic, but do you ever think about men? <laughs> Like gorgeous men with their shirts off and just like rippling hard abs, like statuesque men, like great men, like smearing suntan lotion on each other, about to play beach volleyball. Do you ever watch Top Gun with your pants off? Cause that's what I think you say. That's not what I think you do when you say things like that to me. If you ever want to mess with people that say no homo, this is what you do. All right, next time somebody says no homo to you, you throw it back at them, but then you say something overtly gay with it. So next time somebody's like, hey man, no homo, but nice jeans, just be like, hey man, no homo, but I just want to wake up next to you. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to feel the back of your, I just want to feel your breath in the back of my neck, you know? <laughs> hey man, no homo, but I sort of want you inside me. Like, <laughs> Like, not sex necessarily, but like your essence. Like, I want to collect your sweat and then make it a clone and this way I have you inside my nostrils, like your musk inside my nostrils all day. Hey man, no homo, but today at work, I couldn't stop thinking about how hard I can make you. Like, I bet it's pretty hard. I bet it's like a solid, hey man, no homo, but let's adopt an Asian kid and then raise him. You know, don't be gay about it, start a family with me. <laughs> um, I'm 30 years old, and uh, when you get older, you start realizing that there's, there's things that start happening to you that you weren't expecting. And one of those things is, there's a certain type of porn I can't jerk off to anymore if I fundamentally disagree with the storyline. <laughs> I saw this movie the other day, it was called Barely Legal Librarians. And the whole time I'm thinking, this is a terrible library. Like, <laughs> like I don't know who did the hiring, but they really dropped the ball. Because there's no way that this girl has a master's degree in anything. And that thought I had was totally validated by the fact that every scene in the movie started out with this girl just being like, like, just a really crappy librarian. She just really sucked at her job. Like, every scene was her being like, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't help you find that book. Huh. Well, maybe if you spend a little less time sucking dick, <laughs> and more time learning the Dewey Decimal System, who knows how high you can fly. <laughs> I just wish one scene in the movie was some guy who didn't know it was like a porn. You know, some guy who walked in who was like, yeah, no, I like blowjobs too, but this paper's due tomorrow. <laughs> Get off me. What's going on? Am I, am I being pumped? Is that show even on? Um, I'm in a relationship. Was it great? Because uh, uh, I, was, I was really crappy at being single. I was single for a very long time. I was single for so long that buying condoms had become like less about being safe and more about just remaining optimistic. It's like wishful thinking. And the part of the reason I was so bad at being single is that I was very awkward with women. Like the other day I tried holding a door open for a girl. Have you ever done this? 
Like I saw this girl behind me and she was all cute. I was like, I'm gonna hold this door open. So I pushed it, but you were supposed to pull it. So now I'm stuck and I'm like, all right, I just gotta play this cool. And I don't know why I thought this was playing cool, but this is what I did. I turned back to the girl, I go, whatever. And I walked back in the direction I came in. It was like the door challenged me to a fight, but I declined. Because fighting is beneath me. I was just like, screw it, I'll just stay inside 24 hour fitness. I don't negotiate with bullies or doors they can't push open. But I'm with a girl I love right now and I'm trying to keep her in my life. I'm trying to keep her there. So I've been trying to be more adventurous in the bedroom. But here's the thing about being more adventurous in the bedroom. You gotta go all the way with it. You can't half-ass it. Because there's no bigger turnoff than to turn to a girl in the middle of sex and be like, what are you into? And then follow that with, I can't do that. <laughs> do you have a second thing that you're into? What's the second thing that you like? <laughs> and for me, I can't talk dirty. For me talking dirty, I'm just like, I'm inside you! Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't say anything funny and creative and sexy. I can only tell you what's happening to me in that moment. So, she's like, oh, talk dirty to me. I'm like, we're having sex crazy. <laughs> I'm all like, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. My leg is crappy. <laughs> The other reason I don't like dirty talk is that for the most part, dirty talk is just a series of questions that I don't necessarily want to hear the answers to. If I muster up the courage to be like, ah, how do you like that dick? The last thing I want to hear is, that's okay. Todd's is better, like who's Todd? I don't know Todd. So here's what you gotta do. You gotta ask the question in a way where you can't be disappointed with the answer. So when I'm with a girl, I'm just like, how do you like that dick? A, the best, B, the greatest, C, A, and B, D, it hurts, but in a good way. All right, I'm Aaron Black.